Hey, this is Daniel with another Blender tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool metal industrial or possibly sci-fi catwalk structure. It's actually quite simple in its construction and uh, it's just a good practice for some hard surface as well as some materialing. And hey, these pieces are great assets to use in scenes, games, backgrounds, who knows what you're going to use it for, but I'm going to show you how I made it. So here's the scene. We've got the bridge going down. It's actually being duplicated by using an array uh, modifier, which we see over here. And underneath, I've got some pipes of different colors with metallic texture. They can be seen through the holes of the grate just a little bit, just enough to give some detail. We've got these boxes going long, uh, going underneath the uh, catwalk. Let me select it so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, these things go all the way down and they actually have a red light on them, which shines up through the metal grate and gives it a nice upward lighting, kind of a creepy sci-fi look. Um, and everything else is actually just being duplicated with mirror and uh, like I said, the array modifier. And we've also got a bunch of uh, area lights, which I like to use for environment, things like this. So we've got some side lights with different colors. Um, they're actually too weak to really even be seen, I think. And then we've got the ceiling lights which are all identical uh, linked copy lights. So if I change one brightness, all of them change, which is a nice way to control them if my exposure is wrong. And yeah, those just kind of duplicate on down the, down, down the walkway. So let's uh, turn off these modifiers and I'll show you how I basically built this thing. So modifiers tab over here. If I click on the little monitor or screen button of the array, it's going to basically hide the array. So let's hide that. There we go. So this is just, this is all I built, just this piece. But the array is duplicating it into infinity if I want it. Now it's probably gonna crash my computer if I go too high, but uh, yeah, so there's that. And then before the array modifier is the mirror modifier. So if I turn this off, I'll hide the mirror modifier. There we go. This is all the bridge really is, <laughs> is one half of the bridge. And uh, then it's mirrored over to the Y. So if I put that back on, there we go. And then of course, the uh, array is duplicating it down the length. So let's get to building this thing from scratch. All right, we've got our default cube here and I am for once actually going to use it. I normally delete this or don't even have it in my startup file, but we're gonna use it. So select your cube. For me, that's a right click. Uh, that's gonna be decided by your preferences. Some people like left click select. I'm kind of stuck on the old way of right click. So once it's selected, press tab to go into edit mode and we're gonna scale it down um, to make it basically uh, the narrow framework that we're gonna make this floor piece out of. So S for scale, Z and do 0.1, nice and thin. Now let's do S, X and type in six. There we go. So we're getting the length here and we need to move this over. Um, remember, we're still in edit mode. So we're going to do G for move along the Y axis and let's type in one. There we go. Nice. So you see the origin point is this little orange dot right in the middle. And that is uh, off center, which is good because when we use the mirror modifier, it's always based on the uh, center or origin point and it's going to flip it over to the other side. So let's just turn that, on, turn that on right now so we can see it. So go to your wrench add modifier and uh, mirror, and then uncheck X and check Y. There we go. Cool. Next is we're going to basically kind of cut out a few sections. So I'm going to go back into tab or edit mode, control R to make a loop cut, press plus to add another loop cut and enter. Now with these loop cuts still selected, these are edges, that's why they're orange. Actually, right now I'm in vertices mode up here on the uh, top left. I'm going to click on the edge or the line one, and I'm going to right uh, hold Alt and right click on this edge loop and then Shift, and I'm still holding Alt, right click on the other one. Now I've got both of these edge loops selected, and I'm going to move them together closer. So to do that, switch this to medium. Now S and X, and look at this. It's based on the median point in the middle. So I'm going to make a, a kind of a support beam right here and then control R. I'm going to make a loop cut and slide it up to about here. I'm trying to actually copy about half that thickness of this middle piece. Control R, another loop cut and slide it down to this edge and I, I try to make it half the thickness of that middle center support beam. I'm going to alt right click this and just kind of GG to move it. GG allows you to slide things without getting them all crazy. Okay. Now I'm going to make another edge loop here, click and slide it right about there. All right. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to clean up this cube 
uh, by turning off my mirror. And I need to delete this these faces down the middle. Because when you're mirroring things, you, you don't want it to have a face cutting down the middle because the mirror takes care of that. So I'm going to select them, delete faces. There we go. Cool. And next, I'm going to uh, basically make holes where the grate is going to be in the middle of. So I'm going to select this top face and this bottom face, hit spacebar, which is our search function, and I'm going to type in bridge edge loops. There we go. Now I made another face here. I don't want that. Delete that face. Do the same thing over here. Select this top one, bottom one, spacebar, bridge, edge loops. Delete this extraneous face we don't want. Delete. Awesome. So this is uh, the mesh we want, kind of the base beginning mesh. Turn back on the mirror modifier. Cool. Now let's add the grate. So go back into tab, edit mode. I'm going to do shift A and plane. Just makes a flat plane there. Now we need to size it to fit perfectly. So S, X, 6. Remember like we did earlier? There we go. And we need to move it over one because remember, we actually have some mirror happening while we edit. So G, Y, 1. There we go. Cool. So uh, there we go. We've got this plane, which is going to have one material for the metal grate. And then these, this kind of frame piece is going to have a different material and it's all gonna to work together really nicely. I'm actually gonna move this grate up a little bit by hitting GZ right there. We just want a barely, that little tiny frame edge. Because think about this, if people are walking on this, you don't want a whole bunch of bumps, <laughs> not safe. Okay, let's make the little supporting, um, I don't know, the little support beams that hold the, the railing. To do that, we're gonna use the same uh, mesh, go back into edit mode, and I'm gonna make a cube. Shift A, cube. So I just made a mesh while in edit mode. That means I'm basically combining these two meshes together. Even though this is two separate shapes, they're technically one mesh. I move them, they move together. Go back in edit mode. All right, so undo. There we go. So we got this cube. I'm going to hit the number seven to go to my above view. G to move it right here. Uh, S for scale and 0.1. Nice small cube. I'm actually going to turn on snapping right now. So go up to the little magnet and then in the drop down, select absolute grid snap. So now I can move this cube, which is again, it's going to be a support beam all along uh, the, the, the lines in the grid, which is good. And it, it really works best when you're in, you know, uh, uh, isometric view, like seven for above view. So let's zoom in by hitting period. Any, anything you have selected, if you hit period, it zooms into it and let's stretch this upwards a little bit. So right click on this top face. I'm going to press E. Oh, we want to turn off our snap. See, everything we edit is in snapping mode and I don't like that. So uh, for this uh, moment, we're going to turn off snap. Okay, back to where we were. So E, move it up a little bit. E again. Now I'm going to grab this face. And if we click on our uh, little arrow over here, it gives us this, uh, I think they're called gizmos. I can move this over here just to give it some interesting shape. Now we're going to extrude this up, I don't know, one unit. Mm, let's go up another, GZ1. There we go. Moving up one unit. Awesome. Now we're going to make the top piece, which is going to hold the metal railing. And I kind of want to do the reverse of what I did down here. See how it's thicker and it goes thin? Let's do the opposite. So E and then E again. Now we just grab this face and move it out. You can do a 45 degree angle if you want. And I want this top piece to be a little taller to give room for the um, handlebar or the, the railing to go through. Now an added level of detail is if we select this interface, press I and inset it like that. It just gives a few more edges to be uh, a kind of eye candy. Doesn't really serve a purpose right now, but little details like that kind of add, um, add some realism to your scene. Okay, now let's cut a hole for the railing to go through. So I just selected this side face. If I press period, remember it zooms right in. I'm going to select the other one. So I've got both sides selected. I'm going to press I for inset. And then spacebar, bridge edge loops. Punches a hole. Awesome. I cover that in my, um, what is it, hard surface uh, modeling tips video. And there we go. Let's go back into edit mode, select edge 
and just, let's grab these top edges right here and I'm going to I'm going to bevel these. So control B. I'm going to press plus a few times to add some roundness to it. Cool. And I'm also going to grab holding shift. I'm going to grab these four outer edges and bevel them a little bit as well because they're very visible and they're long and I want those to not be hard sharp edges. I want them to be kind of soft, which uh, again is another thing to add realism to your scene is get rid of all your super sharp edges. It just is not, it's not, not how things work. Okay, so we need to duplicate this support beam across the side of the bridge, but we need to tile so that whenever we add other bridge sections with the array modifier, they'll all line up perfectly. There won't be any breaks or weird gaps or things too close to each other. So we need to space them out st strategically. So if you grab a face or edge or um, vertices of an object like this, I'm just going to grab one of these random edges over here and then control L. There we go. We've got the whole thing. We're ready to copy it or duplicate it. Press seven to go to the above view. Turn on your snapping, which is the magnet. You can also use shift tab to turn it on and off. And we need to copy this. So I'm going to do shift D and look at that. It's snapping onto the grid. Put one over. Oops, move it up. There we go. And then also over here on this intersection of, of that grid right there. The reason being is look in between uh, this beam and this beam, there's four major squares. So over here, there's only two, but whenever when this gets duplicated, there'll be two more and then a beam. So it'll all line up nice and even let's test out my theory by adding an array modifier. Yeah, there we go. No one knows. Cool. Okay, we're ready to make our hand railing, which is just going to be a long skinny cylinder. Uh, let's create it in the very middle of our scene by doing shift C. And I am still in edit mode of the bridge piece. This is all one mesh, uh, which is important because it's doing the mirroring and the arraying for us. If you do this as separate meshes, you'll have to do separate arrays and separate mirrors because they're separate meshes. But I'm keeping it all as one to make it nice and convenient. So my 3D cursor is in the middle of my grid right now because I did shift C. Now that means whenever I make this next cylinder mesh, it's going to be right there. Uh, the 3D cursor is the origin point for every new object you make. So. Shift A, cylinder. Uh, let's rotate it. So press R, Y, 90. So we just rotate it along the Y axis, 90 degrees. Now we need to scale it up. So let's do S, X, 6. Perfect. Look at that. It's a perfect six units long on either side, on both sides. So it's really 12, 12 units long total. But it's too skinny. So we need to shrink it down. I'm going to do that. Uh, one, one little trick I've discovered is if you uh, select the outer faces of a cylinder by holding shift and then switch this to individual origins. Now look, I'm shrinking the individual faces. There's only two faces and since they're parallel, it's basically shrinking the whole cylinder without changing the length, which is good. So let's shrink it down. You just eyeball it. Maybe type in point one. I don't know. <laughs> Press three to go to our front view. And we're going to move it by hitting G, put it right in that hole, period to zoom in. Ooh. Let's do plus to zoom in. It's a little too big. So scale it down some more and just make sure it fits right in that hole that we made. Okay, cool. Look at that. It's going through the hole. That's good. Awesome. Now let's turn on our array modifier to make sure things are looking good. And they are. Looks great. I'm going to make a connector on either end of this handrail by uh, do, making some con making some uh, edge loops. So on the cylinder, we're going to do Control R, click and drag there, and another one. Drag that to the end. Try to do the same length. Oops. Oh, my my uh, snap is still on. Let's turn that off. Let me zoom in a little bit to show you what I'm actually doing. So here's the one we just made, the edge loop. I'm going to make another one. Control R right in the middle. Without uh, moving, I'm going to hit Enter, Enter. And then I'm going to pan over to the other end. I'm holding Alt Shift to pan. Edge loop there, there. Okay, cool. So I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. So holding Alt, right click on this, and it will select the whole ring of faces. So I'm in face mode. Hold Alt and right click on a cylinder and it will grab the whole ring. Let's grab the other ring on the other end. Holding Shift and Alt. 
There we go. Now we're going to press S for scale. See how it's scaling it up. Make it a little bit thicker. And there we go. So now this is what it looks like in the middle. If I go to the other end, this is the array making extras. So let's see, it kind of has like a thick connector right there. And I like that. Okay, we're done with the basic modeling. Let's get to the materials. So the best part of this whole catwalk, in my opinion, is the metal grate where you can see through. A lot of people are asking me, how did you cut all those holes? How did you do the modeling for the grate or the grill? And uh, I felt a little guilty, although not really, because it's just ingenuity. It's not modeling, it's a texture with an alpha channel. So what that means is you can actually see through the holes and the holes are not cut out of mesh. There's no polygons, it's just a texture that has transparent sections. Uh, so let's do that. Let's uh, expand or split this screen into two. I'm going to make the top one my shader editor. Move this over here. Press in to get rid of that uh, panel. Here we go. All right. So we need to make a few materials first, and we're going to name them. So first, this top one's already there. Let's double click on the name and name it base metal. That's just kind of the default metal that everything will have first. Click the plus button, add another one, new, name it, grate or grill, whatever you want to call. Make another one. Let's name this one handrail. Make another one, name it underlight. And I think that's enough for now. Okay. Let's zoom into this principled B BSDF shader and get this set up. So this is all metal. So let's turn it metallic all the way up. Keep specular in the metal. You can play with that later. And I'll put the roughness to around there. And the, I'll make the color a little bit darker gray, somewhere down in the middle. Okay. And also, if you want to switch to material mode so we can see a little bit more of what we're doing here. Okay. Now for the grate, we need to assign where the grate's going to be. So let's go to edit mode with face selected. Let's grab this face, which is just one face, and then click on great and assign. There we go. So now we're in the great material. We're going to use image textures. I'll show you where to get that in a second. Let's get our handrail mapped. So click on one face of the handrail and control L to grab the whole thing. And then click on handrail material and assign. I'll just make this a color just for now. There we go. And then the underlight, uh, uh, we'll just make that right now real quick. It's pretty simple. So shift C to put our cursor back in the middle. Edit mode. And let's make a cube. SX6. And let's size it down to make it pretty small and skinny. And then just eyeball it. SX to make it, you know, it doesn't have to reach all the way across. There we go. Now here's the trick. We need to move it down assign the base metal to it. So click on base metal and assign, and then click on this top face. Because remember, only the top part's gonna have the light material. And I'm gonna press I for inset, click on the, uh, the under light texture and assign. There we go. Now control L to grab the whole thing, and this is in the middle. But look, it's actually, it's a, there's a mirror happening, but we can't see it. So let's move it over here. and then move it up. I want it to shine right through the metal grates. So that is a good placement right there. Now let's uh, click on this underlight material. Click on where it says principled BSDF. With the menu open, just press E, the letter E. It turns it into emission. So it's an emission shader and make the color red. So click on that, make it red. Turn the brightness up to, I don't know, 20 strength. There we go. Okay, so we're done with that. Uh, let's get this um, great texture going because I know a lot of you are real curious about that. So you need to select great, which for now is a, a white boring material. The place that I got the texture is 3dtextures.me. Uh, if you do tag grill, it is number, scroll down a little bit, a little bit more, number 004, metal grill 004. Very nice metal texture. I've used it in a few other places and I like it because it looks realistic. It's got this really nice X, kind of an underneath support structure, which I'm all about that for realism. Um, and it's got, of course, hexagonal holes, which I love hexagons. So there we go. So download that and uh, put it on your, put it in your folder. 
And here's how I like to apply um, PBR shaders or PBR image maps rather is click on the principal BSDF and press control shift T. Now this brings up a browsing um, dialog and this only will work if you have the node wrangler add on enabled. It's kind of a shortcut. It has a few other shortcuts too for nodes. So I'm going to find my folder and here they all are. So I'm going to just select these all select them, press principal texture setup, and it does a whole lot of work for me. It's not perfect. I'll show you how sometimes it misses a few images here and there, but it's really close. So let's move these things to make it a little cleaner. I'm not doing any actual displacement, so let's delete that. I do like to run displacement uh, into a bump node and have it go into height. And let's turn the distance down to like 0.2. Usually you don't have to have that very high. Now look, we're missing the base color image. So I'm going to click on metallic and just do shift D and move it up here. Now click open. We got to manually find it. It's a uh, base color. And we can zoom out a little bit. Plus or minus zooms in and out. Drag the color and connect it into base color. And it also missed the alpha channel. So let's just uh, grab roughness and shift D. I know this is kind of messy, but I'm out of room. So I'll just move it over here open and grab the opacity map, plug it into alpha right there. Cool. So there is an alpha channel, but we can't see through because we need to do another setting, which is weird because it has to do with Eevee. For some reason, we have to suffer through it and fix it, even though if we're using cycles. So um, we need to change in the settings uh, tab of materials. I did uh, alpha clip and I think it worked pretty good. There we go. Look at that. See through transparent alpha channel is working. Now I'm going to switch this, go to my renders tab and switch this to the cycles. Okay. There we go. Now let's map this because I'm sure you guys are all going crazy because this, this texture is not mapped. It's stretching, which is really annoying to me too. So change our shader editor to UV editor. In edit mode, we need to select the face that the grate is on. So there it is. Now, I'm, uh, you can't see it, but it's actually overlaid as a perfect square, which is why it's stretched. So press A to select it. S, X. Let's try four. There we go. I think four is almost perfect. Let's do S, X, 1.5. Yeah, that's making perfect squares. There we go. Figure out that math. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have time for that. Uh, so now it's perfect. It's a perfect square, even though the mesh is a rectangle. And that's what we want. Let's get some more room here. Very nice. Let's add the lights. Oh, we need to fix the handrail texture. That's driving me crazy. Go to our material tab, click on handrail. And let's make it a, a dark metal. Make sure this color is in the middle. We don't really want any color, maybe bluish if anything. Medium to dark metal, turn up metallic, turn up specular so it shines and turn down the roughness a little bit so it's more shiny, reflective, easier to grab. Let's work on adding some grime and kind of uh, variation to the general metal texture. So I'm gonna right click on the, uh, the structure here, expand my shader view well, UV and now make it the shader editor and make sure we've got the right material selected. See up here, I've only got, I've, I've got the handrail one selected. So I'm going to go down to material tab, click on base metal. There we go. All right. So we're going to use the Musgrave texture, press shift a click on search MES for Musgrave or is it Musgrave? I don't know. Shift a search again and noise. Okay, so we have two different types of noise here. We're going to mix them or combine them with the mix RGB. So type in MIX, go down one, mix RGB. And uh, the top input, color one, is basically the base layer. And then color number two is what's going to be mixed on top of it. So I'm going to grab the factor because I don't want it to be, I don't want color involved. I just want black and white because noise does have color on it. 
uh, nice use factor. So uh, if I, uh, I'm actually gonna make a flat plane so you can see what this texture is looking like. So mesh, I need to go up to the top plane. And I'm gonna make it really big. There we go, just leave it right there. And I'm gonna make sure that it has the base metal material. And I need to make sure I'm in material view. You can do Z, go to material view, or you can do up here on the top right. Now look, it's just gray because this mix is not going anywhere. So if I plug this into the color, wait for it, voila, there we go, okay. So we need, um, let's put the mix at zero, which means color one is 100%. If factor of mix is one, which is 100%, then it's color number two. See, it's just basically a crossfader between the two. So go to zero, let's change the size, uh, put the detail, I always put it at 16, dimension zero, and uh, what is this crazy word, lacunarity, <laughs> uh, you could do two, uh, it has a good amount of you know detail. So that's good. Okay, now if we do mix to one, you can see this noise texture is very, it's very weak. It's just kind of a blurry, vague noise pattern. Uh, if you increase the scale though, you get a little bit more definition. And of course you have control over the detail and uh, and there we go. That's I think this is a new slider actually in Blender 2.83, which is pretty cool. I don't recall seeing that before. Okay, so I'm going to put this somewhere in kind of the middle. So it's not super black and white, but it's also not super gray neutral. It's just a good mix of the two. I like that. Okay, now we don't want it to go into the color because that would be ugly. We want it to go into roughness right here. All right. And um, now we can see, if you move your angle, you can see the reflection of just kind of like that default, you know, environment sky that this has is only being reflected in the shiny parts and then there's less shiny parts. So to control that further, do search, uh, shift A, search, and then ramp. So the color ramp is kind of like a gradient. You can control, you can control how close the black and white values are of the texture. Uh, and vice versa. You can invert them if you want them reversed, or if you make one of the colors not completely black or not completely white, that also alters the, the output of the shininess in this situation. Since I'm plugging into roughness, it's basically converting, uh, you know, controlling the reflection amount. Uh, if I make my white less white, it kind of brings it all down to, uh, <laughs> to shininess or less. So you can really control the amount of grime and, and dirt, you know, how old this metal is or how unpolished it is by, by playing with the ramp. Okay, let's delete our plane and give us a little bit more room to see things. So let's zoom in and we can see that on our metal surface, such as the support beams and the uh, the framework that the grate is inside has this metal texture applied. Now it looks a little stretched and funny. See, it's kind of stretched here and on this middle piece, it's sort of stretched weird. So I'm going to select that, and we need to we need to control the mapping of it, which is how it's mapped around the edges. So Shift A, search, and coordinate is what uh, the easiest way to do it. And there's a few different options here, and honestly, I don't technically know which one would be best yet. So I'm just going to play around with them. Let's try with let's try generated first. So connect the blue vector point with uh, that, and also over here, and let's see if it looks stretched or warped. Yeah, it still looks the same. <laughs> Let's try object. That there you go, perfect. It's a uh, it's nice and uniform. It's not being stretched in either direction. It's just wrapping around in three D space. So that's good enough for me there. Now let's make some pipes on the underneath part. So again, my uh, I'm going to reset my three D cursor to the center. Shift C. It was, it was already pretty close, but you know, it's really annoying when you lose your cursor and you make an object and you don't know where it is. So I usually do that before I start anything. Okay, um, I'm gonna save this by the way. I haven't saved this at all. Nightmare, catwalk, tutorial. Okay, so let's make some cylinders. Shift A, cylinder, R, Y, 90. Now if I press number uh, three, that gives me a nice front view. I'm just gonna move it down. S to scale it, we want some big, big thick pipes. And let's make them um, pretty long. Here's an easy way to add some detail to pipes and a little bit of realism is we're gonna add some silver connectors. So first I'm gonna make a new material, name it pipe one. And I'm just gonna make it like a, a dark green, a neutral dark green color. And uh, I'm gonna add uh, metallic, specular up, 
and roughness, I don't know, 0.3-ish, it really doesn't matter. So let's tab into edit mode, control R to make a loop cut, click and drag it to the end, and then control R again and there. Now let's switch to face mode. And that trick I showed earlier to grab the, the ring segment of faces is hold Alt and right click. Now we can scale it up. There we go. Now I want to make this silver, but I also want to have this edge piece silver. So if you do control plus, it grows the selection by one you know, face or vertices, whatever you have selected. So let's make a new um, material, new, name it silver. I always have a silver somewhere in my sci-fi work. Turn metallic up, specular up, and roughness down pretty low. And don't forget to hit assign or it won't happen. There we go. So now we've got this uh, segment and let's just use array. Um, but not on that axis. Let's try the next one. One. Nope. Next one. There we go. Cool. And just add a few there. Now let's uh, duplicate this and add some variety to color and size. So shift D. This is an unlinked copy. Let's scale it down a little bit. Here's a cool trick to uh, quickly adding some variety to materials is click on the material you want to make a new version of. Click on this little double page. This is new material basically starting it from the old one. So now it's got its own unique material, but it was based off of the previous one. So we can change this color and it doesn't change the other one. Cool. And remember when I scaled it down just a little bit, that basically altered you know the scale of everything, which is good. Now we've got more break in patterns and it's not all the same. Let's move it back to the starting position. Uh, actually, the starting position is over here. Center of the grid is right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, now because this is sh shorter, it's not reaching all the way down. So go back to your modifiers, maybe add another piece, another two. Okay, let's add a few more. Shift D. And the closer they are to the surface, I think the easier they will be to be seen. So I'm gonna put them up pretty close. Okay, let's change this blue one, make a new material from the old one. Make it, I don't know, red. Make another one over here. New material. Make it, I'm gonna make this one gray, kind of a bright, and make it real small. And I'm gonna add a few of these to fill in some gaps. But we shrunk it down, which means it doesn't reach all the way to the end, so let's make it longer. Gotta be consistent. Don't be lazy. I mean, you can be a little lazy. But <laughs> Don't be lazy if it compromises the quality of your work. There and there, and I'll add a red one over here. Add a blue one here and i will change this color i don't know sky blue whatever cool so relatively little work and look at that we got a whole bunch of cool pipes you can of course play with those connection points you can make them bigger smaller um you know darker whatever it's it's uh it's one of those things where it's like hey you, you have fun with it and do what you like um and look we can see just ever so vaguely some nice colored metallic things under there. And I don't like that the silver things are lining up. I'm gonna hit control seven, which instead of giving us an above view, gives us a below view. And I'm just going to shift these around uh, so that they're not on the same uh, you know, placement. And I'm even gonna scale this one, like just gonna scale the whole thing on, on X and maybe this one too. Just breaking up the patterns. Patterns can be great but also patterns can be bad. You have to be careful and make sure that they're in the right place. Don't really care, these are sticking out. They're not gonna be visible when I render it. Okay, so we've done materials, we've done modeling. Let's do the last step, probably the easiest part. Let's do the lighting. So I'm gonna save my project. Also, for the love of goodness, set up autosave. <laughs> it's a lifesaver. Okay, so let's make some area lights for the ceiling lights first. So shift A, go to lights, area light. See this yellow light pointing down, or this yellow line pointing down? That's the direction of the light. So I'm going to hit G, Z, just to move it straight up. And there it is. An area light is basically a square light source, which is nice for a lot of things like window light, you know, um, ballast lighting, things like that. Um, let's uh, turn it up to maybe 20 and give it a, I don't know, a little eerie green color. I've never, I've never done this before. This is a new step. <laughs> I've never done. And let's change square to rectangle and make your Y, I don't know, three, three units on the Y, one unit on the X. So it's a kind of a rectangular light. 
maybe make it a little longer. Let's do five. Cool. Now let's turn on our grid snapping. If you, you don't have to for this one, cause it's just a light source. It's not like it's visible, um, but I like to, you know, have everything perfect. So I'm going to put these in between just, I don't know. Again, I don't know why uh, I'm going to do alt D and slide it over here and then hit uh, enter. And now I'm going to, now I can do shift R do, do, do. Oh, look at that. It's moving down because I moved down one unit. <laughs> Tricky shift R. You got to be careful. So I'm going to put this perfectly on the line. There we go. Okay. So alt D there, shift R, shift R, 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 R. Cool. Now, because I did alt D remember, like in all my previous videos, I always harp about this. They are uh, linked copies. I think it's the proper term. Um, you think of them as clones. If I change the number of this, watch, I'm going to change this to 10 Watts. Look, if I click on the other one, magically 10 Watts because they have the same data, same DNA inside the object. So i put it back to 20 and, um, let's make some side lights. So shift a light, another area light. Let's move it over here. We want it to point sideways. So R Y O oh, X 90. Nope. Wrong way. Undo R X negative 90. There we go. Now we want this to be a large light source. So again, switch it to rectangle. Make X pretty big. I'm around 20 ish right now. And I, I believe the larger the light source is the larger the power is going to need to be to compensate for that. So, okay, I'm going to get rid of my shader window up here because it's taking up room. Kind of get in the habit of just editing with like extra space being wasted on my screen until I realize I'm wasting space. Okay, so we got our side light over here. I'm going to go to seven and position it uh, here because our camera, which is just right by default here, is actually going to be here ish looking down the stretch. So I'll put this here and I'll make it a red color and then make another one over here, R180 to flip it inside and make it blue. Okay. And, um, we need to move these up a little bit. They're kind of low. If you press three, you can see they're just kind of shooting at the ground level. There we go. And let's make them maybe 50. Cause when you have a large light source, it has to be stronger. It just kind of gets, uh, diffused or, or lost because of the size of the light source. Okay. So lastly, let's position our camera and get it in a nice angle. So I'm going to hit one, move this here. Oh, turn off snapping, rotate it like that. Make sure it's right in the center. Yep, it is. So if I press zero, it goes into camera mode. You can have multiple cameras in a scene, but you can only have one active camera. Now that looks pretty good. I'm going to make my angle wider to make it more dramatic. So just try 35 that can be found on the camera tab and focal length, just like a real camera lens. The smaller the number, the wider the angle, which also does kind of some warping and stretching effects, makes things look um, more architectural can be more, more creepy looking. It really just depends on your composition. Okay. That's good. Now I'm going to hit render and see what this looks like. And then we'll come back and tweak it and make any fixes if we need to. Okay. Here's the first render and I right off the bat. Oops. I didn't make the background black <laughs> easy to forget. Uh, but yeah, I always try to make the world environment black for renders. This looks better. Uh, next thing is the grate looks a little flat. So I'm going to up the bump on it. And the metal, uh, the noise on the metal is a little too obvious and too small. I need to make it a little bit larger and less, less splotchy if I can. Um, I need to do shade smooth on these railings to make the cylinders perfectly round. And I'm really liking how this underlighting is reflecting off those silver connectors of the pipes. See how they just kind of kind of shine on the edges. Uh, it looks really cool. If you want to make this more of a peaceful, nice ramp, um, you know, maybe make it blue, <laughs> light blue, something, you know, pleasing and nice or green. I read it. Red is definitely gives it a scary, scary sci-fi feel. So let's go back and make those tweaks. All right. So go to my world tab, change the color to black and I select my ramp and let's bring back our shader editor. And uh, hopefully we can increase the bump on the great texture. Let's zoom in here. So we got normal map there and distance. Let's do this dot, I don't know, dot six. The, the, the base metal is actually a little bright. So let's go to base metal. Now look, sometimes when you go to a metal, uh, go to a material, you don't see any nodes but it's actually there. So just hit period and it kind of zooms you into whatever was last selected, just like a mesh. It'll, it'll zoom you into the, the area. So let's make our base metal a little bit darker. 
to match the metal grate. And I wasn't really happy with how the, um, that kind of griminess is looking. See, it looks just kind of obviously noise texture. Okay, so let's try some blend modes, which is a nice way to uh, basically mix the, uh, I call them layers because I'm a Photoshop guy, uh, mix the two sources together in interesting ways. Maybe multiply. Mm, yeah, it breaks up a little bit. Maybe play with the scale. Maybe the scale of this one is too small. I need to make it, yeah, bigger. I think that'll help too. There we go. If you bring the white closer to the left, it makes more of a reflective area. If you bring the uh, darker color to the right, oh, sorry, the uh, opposite, this brings makes it more reflective. This makes it more non-reflective. So I'm gonna make it right about there, and I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter. There we go. I don't want this to be a shiny silver metal. Okay, so let's fix the shading on the uh, cylinders to make it smoother so we don't see these edges. However, everything is one big mesh. We don't have the cylinders as a separate mesh, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is make sure that the, the bridge is selected. Uh, hit spacebar and type in smooth. So click shade smooth. And now the cylinder looks great, but everything else looks really crazy. So we need to fix that by going to our, uh, what is this? Object Data Properties tab, and then expand the Normal section and check that. You can leave 30 degrees as 30. That works pretty good, well for almost everything. And basically what it does is, let me get out a camera view. Okay, so the cylinder is shaded smooth because it's underneath the 30 degree uh, cutoff, I guess. And as well as the bevel edges are smooth too, but the sharp edges, which are 90 degrees, are sharp, and that's good. So it's, it's got smooth and flat uh, shading in the right places. Next, let's change the side lights to uh, actually orange. I'm going to change the colors up in this whole scene. And uh, I don't know, I just think, I think it's going to work better. So orange, orange, and also change this to 100 watts. The other one should 100. There we go. And I'm going to make them uh, lined up. I, uh, I don't like them different angles like that. So I'm just going to slide this one down right there. Cool. Give some nice uh, side lighting for some interesting, just aesthetic. Okay, and let's change the red under light to blue. So to go that to do to do that, go to materials, and then make sure under light is selected. We've got that emission shader. That's the right one. Click on the red, and I'm going to make it. Uh, never, I never usually do pure blue, which is a little too much. I like this lighter blue for a lot of things like energy and lightsabers and things like that, uh, glowing buttons. So that's good. And now also the bridge was too short in that render. So we need to make this a little bit longer. So with its uh, select, it's really easy having just one mesh. <laughs> I don't have to select a bunch of different stuff. So with it still selected, I'm gonna go to the modifiers tab and array. Let's put this up at, I don't know, eight. Nice and long, cool. And with this wide angle of the camera, it really just kind of disappears into the distance. You could go even more if you want to. I'll just do 10. You can barely tell at that point, it's getting so small. Uh, I'm gonna put it back to eight just to save a little bit of render time. Okay, now the pipes underneath are not that long, so we're going to extend those. I'm actually going to um, hit Alt-7 to get an underneath view. I'm gonna click over here with my left mouse button, which for me, left click, does the 3D cursor. So now I know exactly how far the bridge is and I'm actually gonna hide the bridge. Press H to hide the selected object. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm ready to carefully right click over here and extend it roughly to where the 3D cursor is. There we go. Grab this pipe, make that one longer and so on and so forth. Let's do that one. Honestly, at the back of the bridge, these pipes will not be visible. <laughs> so I could probably get by with just doing it, maybe half length, you know, because those, those holes get so small, unless you're rendering like 8K or something wild, you really probably won't be able to see these pipes past a certain point underneath the bridge. Let's find our bridge and unhide it. Conveniently, it's just cube because that was the very first object. So I'll hit the eyeball and there we go, it's back. And the last thing is let's set up the compositor so that we can get a nice glow. 
So to do that, let's expand this view up here and change the shader editor to the compositor. Where is it? There it is. And you need to check use nodes. And so this is the image that's being rendered and then it comes to the, com the compositor and that's the output. So shift A, type in glare, put that there. And then shift A and let's do a curves just in case we want to tweak it. We can play with the exposure there. All right, so change streaks to fog glow, which is like a nice generic glow for everything. And let's put it at 0.1 to see what that looks like. And uh, to keep from getting too dark, just overall, I'm going to bump this up a little bit and then drop this down to keep some contrast. There we go. All right, so I think we're ready to do our final render. Let's see what this looks like. And there we have it with that beautiful glow. And you can see if you look on the edge of these uh, pipes and support beams, that little uh, line of orange, that's from those side lights giving the, the kind of the edge lighting. Uh, I really like this. I'm really impressed with myself once again. <laughs> Every now and then I impress myself and this is one of those times. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, you can ask in the comments. If you want to see more tutorials like this, do me a favor and subscribe and like the video. That helps me know that there's people out there that like my content and want to see more of it. And it's going to encourage me to spend more time to make even better videos in the future. So go ahead and do that now if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll be back again soon.